Flotsam. Flotsam. Flotsam, there are some people here to see you. For me, art is a room, art is an, uh, an area. Not just what's on the wall, but, you know, for me, the, the experience begins when you walk into the room. So I like to create those, those rooms, those spaces, not just stuff to hang on someone else's walls. So I kind of look at a gallery itself or a museum as, you know, like the blank canvas and go in there and make it so it doesn't look like a museum anymore or a gallery anymore, make it look, so it looks like something entirely different. Less than two weeks to go now before this show and, you know, there's, uh, there's adrenaline involved. I mean, I, I have no idea if we can pull it off. I never know, you know, because I always try to bite off more than I can chew. My first five or six years, I lived in Michigan. And my father was in the radio business. He was a disc jockey in Grand Haven, Michigan, WTRU Radio. And probably when I was in kindergarten, he was promoted to management to um, turn around a, state, a radio station in central New York, a place called Syracuse, New York. So we moved there, and I lived there until I graduated from high school, and I went to college there. I went to college for journalism. I mean, I liked writing, I liked reading, and I figured um, that would be an interesting career to pursue. However, once I got to college and started taking journalism classes, it was just too much writing. I mean, I wasn't that kind of a writer. I'm kind of a slow, plodding writer. And um, I always liked drawing and doodling and comic art. And I had met uh, some people who were in the advertising and design program there. And that, to me, seemed like a better balance. Of, it involves writing and thinking, but also you know, hand skills and drawing. And that appealed to me a lot. So I transferred from journalism into the design program there. And then eventually graduated with uh, you know, a degree in advertising and design and, and went and did that as a career. Went right to work in New York City at a large advertising agency as an art director. And I worked in New York at several different places for probably seven years or so. And then moved out to California for a job opportunity with uh, my wife, Mary Ann. We came out here probably uh, 19 years ago. My wife and I bought this little cabin um, in a coastal town, and it was empty. And uh, the walls were bare, and we needed stuff on them. And so I thought, well, you know, I'll just make some art. And I started painting murals on the walls. And that didn't stop either. That went outside the house and around the house, and I was painting murals over the murals. Painting on the walls. I don't know at what point it happened. I think he started painting stripes, you know, colors. I thought it looked really cool. And then I got then inspired to start writing the story about how we met the girl in the ugly sweater. He wrote this whole thing out. We worked in the same ad agency. And uh, in fact, he thought I was married with kids for some reason, because I was wearing this really ugly sweater. Later on, he said he saw me walking down the hallway wearing something more appropriate, like jeans and a t-shirt. And he told his partner, he goes, that's the woman I'm going to marry. And he goes, oh, good luck. She's engaged. And, uh, and he goes, nope, I'm going to find a way. That was the first wall, and then it just started spreading from one wall to the next to the next, and it just evolved. And I think when, whether it's this house or at one of those exhibits, when people walk into that atmosphere, it's sort of like a playroom, you know? It's like, yeah, you can write on the walls. And if you look by where our phone is in the kitchen, a lot of people have sort of signed their name or done a little sketch with their phone number and stuff, because I'm allowed to write on the wall. That's a no-no. <laughs> it's like, no, here it's, here it's OK. Never thought it was crazy. I thought it was just really cool. To have a, a house where it's, instead of just boring walls, you have a, a bunch of paintings on them. Yeah, my dad was always helping with filming for me. And uh, anything artistic, he'd support. My dad's awesome. <laughs> and he gives me really good ideas and advice and stuff. It's 
probably why I'm a good artist today because he taught me. The worst thing about him is also the best thing. He's always working. Always. Well, it's two weeks from tomorrow night. 15 days, actually 14 days and 20 hours. And we'll use every one, <laughs> literally every one. Actually, every show I've done, I mean, the very first show I ever did, uh, solo show I ever did, was in 2007, and that was called Flotsam. And it's, it was about, you know, this kind of story of this clown. Crossroads, and I'm going, going to the gypsy fair. And I'm selling, selling my soul. The way I wrote it in the comic, and the way I've kind of painted around, is you meet him at a carnival, and he's a clown. Very, you know, in, in, in my story, he's a Russian clown. I'm not really sure why that is. <laughs> but he's always a Russian clown. And you get to look in a kaleidoscope. He's got this magic kaleidoscope, and you look into it, and you'll see whatever it is you want to see. But he'll say, you know, did you like what you saw? The little kid would say, yeah, I liked what I saw. That was, that was cool, that's what I want. And then in the comic, he, when the kid pulls the thing down, his finger's cut. The character cut his finger, swipes it on a contract, and then literally, he's gone. So at the carnival, um, you know, there'll actually be a flotsam character, there'll be games, there'll be stuff like that. You know, you can actually play a game that might seem innocent at first, but there's always like kind of a darker consequence to it. And so that's a big part of it too, is I mean, I, I like having people interact with art instead of standing, you know, around looking at it. And so it's a way to kind of draw people in and make them play with it, literally play with the art. Um, in this one, there'll be a little bit of a performance. It's a musical performance. I mean, really, the story behind all this is based on an opera. Faust is an opera, among other things. It's a, it's a long German poem, but it's probably most well-known as an opera. And I thought, really, the storyline behind all the art is one big opera. Why don't we, you know, actually write some songs around it? Tonight I uh, hung some banners over above the flatbed in the dock, and then I built a coffin. I built my coffin, the coffin I'll be in for the show. We have uh, three, three full days to go for the opening on Friday. The reason I was even looking for another space was because of uh, a show that I promised to do with Mike where he really wanted to go a lot bigger than he's ever gone and thus he needed a much bigger space than, than a white wall. So I agreed to find a warehouse and uh, luckily found this place. And when I came inside and I looked at it, I kind of looked around and I was like, yeah, this is perfect. This is, I mean, this is exactly what Mike needed. And then, you know, within that same five minute span, I was then thinking, well, this isn't going to be temporary. I'm not going to do this for three months. I'm just going to do this forever. Like, I'm going to get this space and do this galley forever. And it just kind of, it just, it snowballed into, you know, me just realizing that with this space, you know, I could give artists the opportunity to go bigger and, and do things that they've never done before, push themselves in ways they've never thought possible, and really challenge themselves into putting together an art show that's almost more like a museum exhibition than, a, than an art show. In both a good way and a bad way, he's kind of set the bar so high that I don't know how often we're gonna be able to like do this crazy and amazing of an installation. I mean, this is the most ambitious thing that I've ever done, and it's the most ambitious thing Mike's ever done. You know, I've helped out a little bit um, on some of the installations before, but this is the most I've helped out. 
I'm like here quite a bit, like helping out with installation now, and like building stuff, painting, um, you know, helping cut stuff, and you know, like wiring up artwork right now. So I'm a little nervous that, you know, we're behind schedule, but as, as I've, I've worked with Mike on these things so many times, we always pull it together right, right in time, so I know it'll, it'll be cool. It's just, uh, you know, it's crazy getting through it, because there's a lot, a lot of stuff that we still have to do. It's an adventure every time. It's totally, like, every time there's a different court, there's different, different problems, different scenario, different place. But uh, no matter what, every time it's just a crazy, crazy situation. I think every time you get fired from every job, <laughs> at the end you usually get fired and then fired. you need to for the next and so you get rehired. Yeah, fired, blamed. You'll get uh, fired by the end of the day. Beat up. It's, yeah, that's usually how it happens. Yeah, the uh, openings tonight, uh, it's the opening reception. Got a whole gig going on. Got a show, got a coffin, bagpiper. <laughs> it's gonna be interesting. I mean, he's been working on this nonstop from 10 in the morning, nine in the morning, all the way till two in the morning. You know, like, a man doesn't sleep. I mean, you got, we call it gallery foot in the, in the it's like trench foot, but in the gallery, it's, he's uh, cut himself multiple times. You know, there's paint everywhere. It's kind of sketchy. You know, that's just how it works. We're at T minus 34 minutes. Uh, we just finished sweeping up. I mean, I still think we should still sweep up, but I mean, we're right on the line. We got it up. Looks great. You know, there's nothing much else we can do. This gallery uh, and this show with Mike is kind of a culmination of so many things that have happened in the last seven and a half years since I first opened the shooting gallery. So. It's very surreal, but I'm, I'm like very proud and I'm very excited about it. And, and uh, I'm the type of person I, I generally don't show a whole lot of excitement or enthusiasm. It's more kind of internal, and, uh, but I'm pretty excited. I like how um, all the art is actually hands-on and you can play with it, like you can spin the wheels and it definitely turns it into more social and you'll always remember it and I think that's the point is in a sea of shows, you know, which ones stand out, this one definitely will stand out. He encourages people to touch his art, spin wheels, like throw stuff around, throw balls at his artwork, you know, for the throwing games. I don't know, you know what, I'm just really happy I get to do what I do. It makes coming to work really fun, you know, and it, and it makes me want to get up out of bed every day and go to work because I get to work with guys like Mike Shine and artists that are, are, are inspiring and, and, and motivating and are truly interested in it for the art. Please enjoy the grand of Flot Sam's Wonder World. It's cool to have an opportunity like this because um, I paint no matter what. I mean, I paint daily and I paint heavily on weekends, um, but it's a blessing to be able to have something like this hanging over your head. It's a blessing to have a place that needs 18 hours a day of your time, you know, in order to meet your deadline. All that, man, there's, I, mean, I can't complain about that. That's just, that's awesome. It's great to have this sort of an opportunity this size, this, this big of a place, someone like Justin who's there just pushing you, he never says no, he's like, yeah, you know, come on brother, bring it on, what do you want to do, you know? So it, 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 it forces you to really go beyond what you would do, you know, day to day as an artist. And I'm selling, selling my soul.